Intermittent fasting has really emerged as an incredibly popular diet. Even a cursory analysis of online bookstores reveals tens of thousands of diet books telling us how we can make use of these techniques. By contrast, there's really only a handful of scientific studies telling us whether there's anything particularly special about fasting. Now, of course, any diet which encourages us to eat less has the potential to elicit weight loss and health gain. But the big question is whether there's any particular benefit of fasting, any fasting specific effects which we can get from these types of diets. And there's two things which really still needed to be done. One is to examine fasting of sufficient duration to elicit those fasting specific mechanisms. So we're not talking here about studies which ask people to miss a meal or to eat very small amounts on those fasting days. We need complete fasting. And secondly, we need to look at a relatively unusual experimental design where we're not just going to compare standard dieting with alternate day fasting, but we need to actually have another group who are going to fast for prolonged periods, but without losing weight. So to that end, we randomised participants into one of three groups. One group are going to reduce their calorie intake by 25% each day, so energy restriction without fasting. The second group are going to experience a matched degree of energy restriction, but by fasting for 24 hours at a time, alternated with 24 hours of eating 50% more than usual, so fasting and energy restriction. And then the final group did something which I doubt very many people have voluntarily taken part in, and that is to fast for 24 hours at a time, but then to completely refeed on the alternate 24 hour periods. And therefore they're fasting, but without any weight loss. And of course then I'm not recommending that anybody would necessarily adhere to these diets in the real world, but this does generate the experimental model we need to look at the effects of fasting and energy restriction independently and in combination. What did we find then? Well, as I mentioned, that third group are not going to lose weight through only fasting, but we saw very similar weight loss, whether the energy restriction was achieved through a daily diet or through alternate day fasting. Critically, however, we didn't just weigh our participants, but in this study, we used a special type of X-ray, which can identify not just bone, but also separate out muscle and fat tissue. And what we found is that the group who were dieting every day, well, they were losing weight almost exclusively due to a reduction in body fatness. In contrast, the group who were doing alternate day fasting, unfortunately, only half of the weight loss they experienced was due to a reduction in body fat, the rest therefore being fat-free mass, like muscle tissue. Why might that be? Well, we measured components of energy expenditure in this study. And what we found is that that group who were losing fat and muscle due to their fasting, they were also reducing their physical activity levels and particularly their engagement in activity during those fasting periods. And we know that physical activity is incredibly important, both to maintain muscle mass and to maintain general health. In terms of general health, we didn't see any fasting specific effects on any health markers we measured, appetite hormones, or the expression of genes in body fat cells. As an overall take home message then, I would say that anybody out there who's experimenting for themselves with intermittent fasting should be aware that what might look like successful weight loss according to your bathroom scales, you need to think firstly whether all of that weight loss is fat tissue or whether you may be losing muscle mass too. And related to that, you also need to be aware that on these types of diets, you may have a propensity to reduce your engagement in physical activity. So think also about having an active lifestyle while you take part in these diets.